though Jordan didn't land all the shots he took either! Listen, sometimes you have an off week and you sort of just get an ill wind in you that says you gotta make a video on the Go Gamer Portable by My Arcade, a console that I bought at the same place I buy cough medicine and the movie Cats. You probably have a lot of questions about how the channel has gotten so bad, but please, I'm only taking questions about the Go Gamer Portable right now. So... What is this thing? Well, as I said, it was made by My Arcade. There's a good chance you're familiar with the name, or maybe even a product or two. They're a company responsible for making tons of plug-and-play consoles, standalone mini arcade cabinets. They're one of the larger companies that specialize in this sort of product. They work with companies like Capcom and Konami for re-releases of their arcade games like Street Fighter and Contra. They probably own Data East for how many of their old games they've re-released. And they also sell converters to play Famicom and Super Famicom games on their American counterparts. This is where things start to get weird, because the more and more you look into My Arcade, the more you realize that they've been around for about two decades at this point. The thing is, they haven't been My Arcade for very long, only since about 2016. Before that, they were known as Dream Gear, a name still featured on the legalese of the box itself. Dream Gear is a vastly different company from what My Arcade is now. Dream Gear was a company primarily dealing in plug-and-play Famiclone consoles. Famiclone, as it probably took you about five seconds to deduce, are clone consoles of the Japanese NES, the Famicom. How are you allowed to do that, though? Nintendo would probably kill somebody for thinking about Mario without paying a few extra bucks. How are they able to sell a Famicom Nintendo hardware while cutting Nintendo out of the deal? Well, the Famicom being over 30 years old puts it in a unique spot where the patents Nintendo had on the hardware have expired, and as a result mean that you have free reign to just release all the Famicom knockoffs you want. Just don't include any pirated material on it. Whoops. Because of this, Dream Gear has the full legal rights to do what Nintendo does, just worse and faster. 2012 is when these consoles started appearing in more major retailers thanks to the release of the My Arcade Portable consoles, upping it all the way to 16-bit graphics! It was the booming success of these consoles that let My Arcade move on up to making officially licensed machines alongside companies like Namco for re-releases of Pac-Man. Meanwhile, the Dream Gear brand now occupies a Mad Cat's role of making cheap third-party controllers as well as a adapters for stuff like the 3DS to charge in cars. This is like those mafias that worked out of pizza shops but liked making pizzas too much and just did that instead. Also, there's a really good chance that now is when My Arcade started breaking the law since earlier My Arcade consoles actually used an unauthorized version of the same hardware used on Game Boy Advances. Seeing as Dream Gear was just the distributor and not the actual console maker, they were able to avoid a legal battle with Nintendo. I don't think the US government could manage to wave off a lawsuit from Nintendo. Not just that, but the My Arcade line of consoles managed to avoid a common trapping of Famiclones in that its preloaded software is the bare minimum to be considered original. Just because it looks, plays, and sounds exactly like a pre-existing game doesn't mean they can throw you in jail for it! Ah, hell, you don't even gotta do all three! You can just throw in an unedited Kirby sprite in there and get away with it! Do you have time to personally kill every individual ant that crawled on your ice cream? That's the philosophy that My Arcade is banking on. There have been dozens of revisions of what is the same collection of games in different shells. The Gamer Max Portable, the Gamer V Portable, the Pixel Classic, designed by a moron, but we've landed on the Go Gamer Portable, 2017's punishment. So, how in the world did I come into ownership of the world's most lawsuit-prone paperweight? Who knows, I think Andrew Jackson was just giving me the stink eye and I wanted him gone. I was just walking through Walgreens, picking up some medicine to help myself get over a bad cold, and in a stupor, I just grabbed the Go Gamer off the shelves and went to self-checkout to make sure not another soul knew I was about to pay $20 for this thing. Shoving three AAA batteries into it and we're off to the races! Aw oh, yeah, video game action like I've never seen before! You idiot. You fool. You knuckle-dragging moron. This was just a peel sticker. I've done it again. Call your dad and tell him how disappointed he is in you, you shiny rube!
I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. The build quality on this thing is crazy low. The buttons are a really hard plastic and clicky. The D-pad is made of this really stiff plastic that makes it feel like you're controlling the games with an eraser. And if there were more buttons, I'd complain about them too. This model is clearly based on the original Game Boy, but even though that console came out over two decades ago, this one still makes the same mistakes that that console made, like having the speaker directly where one of your hands would naturally rest. On top of that, the entire front of the console has this glossy plastic finish as opposed to the mat on the back, and that means it gets smudged, stained, and smeared super easily. If I ever commit a grisly murder and they need to find my prints, it's gonna be all over this thing. Before we go on, I just want to give a quick shout out to myself for making great choices like making four tester videos and deciding to make a video about a console that I have no comfortable way of recording since the only output for the whole thing is an audio jack. In fact, before we get into things, let me just show you what I had to do to capture footage for this video. Yep, that's my blanket on the ground, a nightstand, a phone holder, for holding phones, and a silver frog statue to act as a counterbalance to keep the stand from tipping over. I had to lean over this thing in gut-wrenching agony for half an hour at a time just to record footage for this video. For those saying I haven't suffered for my art, how dare you? I had a bit of a tummy ouchie after playing baby games. So flipping the switch and we're ready to play Family Sports 220 and 1. Couldn't even put a My Arcade splash screen at the beginning. Also, just so you know, this thing has three settings. Off, on, and on, but they turned the backlights off. You know, to save the environment. Calling it Family Sports is a bold choice, since every single game on the entire console is single player, but that's neither here nor there. What is here is a crap ton of sports games. Tennis. Pick an opponent and a court and then press the A button. There is nothing else to do in this game except time your A presses to when the ball gets close and swat it back. If you're deathly afraid of variety, you can just do this until the batteries die, but you can also give it a little spin by holding a direction while pressing A. Sadly, it seems like the quality assurance team didn't give this game the time it deserved since I got an out despite the ball being inside the court. Whew, good thing they made this game the first one. Golf. Well, they already have a character named Jack, so I'm going to guess this thing has been listening to me the entire time. My Arcade is a fantastic company with tons of innovative and fun products at affordable prices. Have I mentioned the record-breaking size of the genitals on the My Arcade CEO? It's almost confusing how good he is at kissing women. Make like a streamer and smash your PS5 and pick up a My Arcade console from your local Cumberland Farms. Baseball! Jack has grown up and multiplied into an entire baseball's team worth of freaks and is ready for the big leagues. You get the choice of a few different swing styles, which I'm sure have a lot of variety in how they play out, but I'm looking for home runs. I want to up my RBI. Side note, what does RBI stand for? I'm too scared to Google it. Well, it looks like the season's off to a rough start since this game has a stupid amount of lag. Pressing A and swinging the bat have such a wide window of difference that it's impossible to hit a ball. But I think I've seen Field of Dreams, so I'll I know I just gotta keep on swinging. Yes, a direct hit. Table tennis. It's tennis, but with all the advantages of a table. All right, let's get this one started. Wait, I wasn't looking. Bowling. Well, it's pretty hard to mess up bowling. Just line up your shot and try to get it with the most power and... Every bowler should be killed. Darts. Oh, this isn't a sport, why is it on the con? Basketball! Alright, just do the same goddamn thing we've been doing in every other game so far and try to get the thing in the thing by pressing the A button at the right time. You think the B button's feeling jealous? I managed to land a single bucket and retired immediately afterwards to preserve my 100% shot record. I am statistically a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. Boxing! Listen, I know we're all close personal friends here, but I'm just gonna leave this loaded handgun on the table, and the first person to mention Punch-Out is not leaving this room without a grapefruit-sized hole in their gut! You pick your opponent and then either hold left or right and hit A to punch, or do the same with B to block. This took me forever to figure out, but it doesn't matter since one punch sends this tomato can down to the mat lickety split. It's clear the ref wanted this guy dead, since he's knocked out about 20 times in this one fight and he doesn't call it. I'd say there's a small amount of simple pleasure to get out of a game this 
this simple, but frankly, that is giving way too much credit to this thing. Even for a budget console made for the youngest children or the oldest grandparents to get for the youngest children, it's so slow and cheap feeling that anything you could mistake for fun doesn't last long. Trampoline! I'm just gonna throw this one out there without knowing anything about the series. This guy looks like a Hunter x Hunter character. I pray to God that's accurate. So in this game, you gotta press down to leap higher and then jam on some buttons in the sky for points. There might be a small thing in the back of your head telling you that you've seen this before, and it's very likely you have. This is the exact same trampoline minigame from Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. In fact, a few games like fencing and swimming are taken right out of Mario and Sonic, and it's one of the oddest parts of this whole package. Like, other games at least try to be unique, but these games in particular look like they're note-for-note -note copies of the Mario and Sonic versions. It's painfully clear that these are games left over from earlier clone consoles. 100 Meter Dash! Yeah, this is the sound a gamer makes when he's cornered by a large predator like a sun bear or an Amazonian river otter. City Battle! Okay, so you probably guessed that interpretive space battle wasn't making its way to the Olympics anytime soon. This is one of the few games on the main menu that isn't a sports game and is instead a pretty blatant knockoff of Gradius and other side-scrolling shmups. I will shamefully admit, though, that I did play this one for a little, because bad Gradius is like bad pizza, it just doesn't exist. It's got a variety of power-ups, different enemies, another level, maybe? I didn't like it that much. Crazy Moto! We're slowly drifting away from the sports theme, and with it the art style is slowly dying. You play as Bobblehead Bobby, and you have to kill your brothers in a death race by bashing their heads in with a hammer. I'm not kidding. You have to take the opponents out with weaponry to get ahead in the race, but it's not like a Mario Kart item where you just throw it and it knocks them out. No, you're smashing their heads in with a hammer. You make some turns, which aren't exactly telegraphed by the roadmap, which is just two straight lines. Kill some people, bada bing, bada boom, you're a champion. I also just want to make it clear that every single other racing game on the entire console is just this game, but you drive a different thing. Final game on the main menu is Mini Fighter. Mmm. Ha! We caught these guys ripping off Capcom. Hey, so if any artists are listening to this, could you do me a favor and do some cherry fan art, please, and thank you. So, getting into combat, and you have no idea how janky this feels. You know those Tiger LCD games that only have a few screens for your characters to move on like a calculator? I'm trying to say this game controls like a calculator. You cannot move in any direction you actually want to. Your moves have a stupid amount of startup and ending lag. You have super moves that you can't perform. They can't make fighting games on real handheld consoles. What chance does the Go Gamer Portable have? Honestly, I don't see how this game's supposed to make main stage Evo in the state it's in. Probably gonna get there before Skullgirls, though. Did you know this console was actually released on the same day as the Skullgirls launch party? Crazy. All right, so we've gone through all the games on the main, there's also fishing, all the games on the main menu, but you've probably noticed another little page of mini games. Those mini games are divided up into six more categories, each one of those categories having about 40 games in them. Ah, uh, that doesn't sound like fun. If anybody has a problem with me not covering every game out of all of these, including the countless Tetris, Breakout, and Zuma's Revenge knockoffs, I plead with you. Scream your complaint into a bottle and then toss that bottle into the sea. I'll get it in about two to three business days. Robot Wars! Also just a console-wide complaint. None of these games have start screens, which means the edit of this is going to have to get real creative. Robot Wars! Also, every game has a stupid amount of startup and it takes forever for them to just begin. Robot Wars! Is a bit of a misleading title, as I was expecting to fight a war as a robot, but instead you play as a tank. Maybe there's a robot inside the tank. Maybe there isn't. West Cowboy! I would personally love to play the game they stole this from, because it's not a bad idea. You're in a quick draw showdown to the death, but you each agree to turn on cheats before the game and the bullets go super slow. You can dodge out of the way of bullets and try to get into position to shoot your opponent. I let myself get hit the first time, because I think if I let this lady shoot me, she'll see how much of a nice guy I am and go out with me. The fact that you leave a little after image when you move, which is just the last frame of animation but with a little less detail, is honestly really Really charming. Not $20 charming, but who's counting? Me. Also, it can't be stated enough how both this and Robot War have the exact same song looping in the background. There are maybe about 10 songs spread out amongst 220 different games, which I was a particularly big fan of. 
Balloon Boy! It's Balloon Fight. Jumping Boy! Well, the creators of Balloon Boy are back at it again with a brand new installment in the beloved Boy franchise. In this one, you have to jump around while collecting coins and avoid falling into water. If there are more levels, I'm eager to not see them get me out of here. Rescue Pets! I found a spot where you can just not move and all the stolen Hamtaro sprites fall directly onto you and into the safe spot, because why try, you know? Crossing! It's Frogger! Jack Adventure! They made my life story into a video game! And just like the real deal, I die alone and unloved in the middle of the Arctic after being mauled by a whale. Seize Jewelry! It's Donkey Kong, but instead of a hammer, you get a shield, and the game doesn't work. Greedy Girl! You know, I've always been a big fan of games with unlikable protagonists, and this one tells you why this girl's a piece of shit in the title! It's Snake, but with a fun new twist. Since the game is grid-based, you can't turn when you want to. You can only move in a new direction whenever you go onto a new space, not before or when moving onto a new one. Also, the difficulty doesn't come from you getting longer and therefore being a bigger target. That part of Snake uh, doesn't exactly work in this version. The difficulty comes from you wanting to turn the game off and do something else. Okay, for this next game, Rope Skipping, how about we just both experience it the same way that I first experienced it, okay? WHAT?! Yep, your eyes aren't deceiving you, that's Dawn and Barry from Pokemon Platinum with Lucas's head on somebody else's body, I guess because they wanted to throw Game Freak off the scent. They were also really clever since they edited the sprite so no one would know. Here's the original Barry sprite, and here's the rope skipping version. WHICH ONE DO I SHOOT?! This is by far the most blatant sprite theft on the whole console, and it was for the jump rope game! It's just pressing A when you feel like it, and if you trip you get to see the only original sprite work for the whole game! Sad face. The worst part is, though, that it shows that they could have easily made Diamond and Pearl on the GBA, but didn't. God, Game Freak cutting corners yet again. Elvish boy! Now, despite what you may believe, this isn't actually a member of the Boy franchise. It's actually the Japanese exclusive game Doki Doki Literature Club, with the graphics swapped out to be a boy game. You throw bubblegum at a mad scientist and then stand on his head. These are just the facts, folks. Space Sword! I'll give him this. These are the best graphics they've stolen so far, but... They did also make a bad game to balance everything out, so that was nice of them. You're supposed to fly through space and destroy enemy robots for, hopefully, justice, but the momentum is ridiculous. I want to play this game because I have a good feeling it's where they put most of their effort into, but I just can't get over the fact that this is not a space background, it's black ice. You slip and slide all around the screen, you can't stop yourself once you start moving, and it's impossible to actually get to an enemy to fight them. Hell, Marksman! This console has a bad word on it. I don't think we can be friends anymore. Jumping ball! I couldn't figure out how to make the ball jump, so instead of surviving, he was squashed to death. This game leads directly into the next game, Mad Ball, which has the worst physics ever. The buttons don't work, and I think that's pretty unique. I got to the second level, but then the game broke, and I was happy again. Hair Fighter! This is the one where you find the stolen Waddle Dew Sprite. Did you know your tongue has no natural resting spot in your mouth? I just thought that was a fun piece of information for you to know. Jumping Mary! Hubert, fuck you. Soda pop. Tapper, but if you don't give people their drink before they even enter the bar, they are bursting into tears and begging for help. Also, if you get to the second level, Mario shows up. Go on, buy the console and prove I'm lying. Follow me. At first you may think, oh, it's the 20th snake game out of the 220 on the console. No, the game is literally just following the angel and then you win could have spent that $20 on charity. On fire! So in this game, you play as a fox with a fuse on your tail and you have to light campfires. I don't even think you can lose in this game, so I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. It's better than Ultra Kill. Open Gold Box. This game dares to ask the question what it would be like if you opened up a box that you didn't know the contents of. Hours of fun. Forest Adventure! You play as a goddamn Hollywood fashion plate in this game. And if you can believe it, they just put this guy over the top of Elvish Boy, Gumball Attack and all. I was gonna play more. Okay, I wasn't. But then this game just expects you to deal with the fact that this guy is here and I call it quits. Pirate Landing. It's learn to fly. 
Eh, give them one thing, they at least found a cool new game to steal from. Water Rescue! Okay, I think this game is supposed to be like Breakout or Arkanoid, but you catch the people falling. Uh, but the guys never jumped out of the ship, they just sat there, suffering. This is less a game and more of a morning simulator. Ice cream with no space. This is just Soda Popper again. They couldn't even think of 20 different game ideas for this menu, they started looping. So if all of these games sound interesting, stop. But what I really wanted to talk about was the education portion. Yeah, on this game console, they included 40 educational games that will go woefully unplayed by any person who gets handed this thing. And for those worried that this may be a bit above your IQ level, trust me, we're learning about capital and lowercase letters. You can learn about colors, what an inkwell is, cause that's gonna show up a lot in your daily life, even learn wrong information, on purpose, as a joke. The best idea I can have for why these are here is that a parent would give this to a three-year-old and say, oh, if you play 20 minutes of educational games, I'll let you play City Battle. So yeah, this thing stinks. Oh, I'm saying it! In an age where owning a console is less required than ever thanks to online services like Steam, meaning that they're not required anymore, preloaded consoles like this are less relevant than they've ever been. You know Fortnite is free, right? Plug and play consoles like this with the same idea had their heyday in the early to mid 2000s since gaming was just getting mainstream, and the simplicity meant that they were the perfect gift for a kid to get hooked on for a weekend. Now, when you have full libraries of actual games at your fingertips, more often than not at stupid low prices, consoles like this are all the more antiquated. This is just a cheap feeling plastic shell chocked full of cheaper games with no charm or originality about it. But like, yeah, duh. Even when I was loopy on medicine when I bought this thing, I wasn't under the impression I was gonna get something out of it, just that I had something to make a video on when I was completely out of ideas. Uh, I... I swear there's a Mega Man X video in the tank. Please don't go watch Davy Gunface. Stay here! Ah, crap. I, uh, I didn't expect you to get here so soon. I, uh, I haven't quite, uh, finished the video yet. I usually have, like, a lot more time by this point, like 20 minutes. Uh, please go away. <laughs> <laughs>